Hi, I'm Scott McLean from TransMusicMastery.com, and in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to use the Zebra 2 multi-stage envelope generator. Several synthesizers, many synthesizers, have these types of envelope generators. So it's good to know basically how to use these and, and get the basic understanding of the concepts. So I'll be demonstrating that in this video. And then we will apply this technique of using multi-stage envelope generators when we build the acid sequence patch that Adam Sabo created and we'll do that in the next video. Okay so I've got basically the initialized patch loaded up. I don't have a MIDI clip here I'm just going to play keys on the keyboard. So that's the initialized patch and if we bring up the multi-stage envelope generator screen there are actually four different envelope generators. MSEG 1, 2, 3, and 4, and that's, right now all of them are set to the default, which is basically having no envelope. All these little handles are, are down, and I'll be demonstrating what they do in a moment. But let's say we wanted to modulate something similarly to a standard attack, decay, sustain, and release type set up. Well, to do that with a multi-stage envelope generator, what I'll do is I'll use each stage here, steps 1, 2, 3, and 4, as the standard typical ADSR. So if I bring this handle up by just clicking on it and moving it up, I could say, well, this would be my attack stage. Now I can click on the line and drag, and that allows me to change the curvature of this stage in the envelope. Okay, so I can have it be concave or convex, okay, or linear, just by basically double clicking on the line. And if I move it left and right, I can get what's called an S curve, okay, which could be useful depending on what you're trying to do. And up and down just changes the concave to convex shape, okay. So if we said, well, this could be the decay, so the second stage would be the decay, and then let the three to four stage be what we would consider sustain, and then the fourth stage be release. Now, to have it loop during the sustain stage, I would want to right click on the handle and say loop start, and that would designate this as the loop start point. And this shaded area up here represents the loop region. Okay, so right now the loop is too long for what I'm trying to demonstrate. So I want the loop to stop at handle 4 here, so I could right click on that and say loop end. And now it's just going to loop on stage 3. So now if I play a note, okay, nothing happens with the multi-stage envelope generator because I haven't specified it as the modulation source for anything. So if I wanted to, I could set it for the tune. Let's have it modulate the tune. So I'll set MSEG1. And now we see this position indicator start. If I increase this to, let's say, 12, that would correspond to 12 semitones of tune modulation from multi-stage envelope generator number one. So now if I play a note, and if I increase my release, that will allow us to hear this release stage occurring. In fact, now the release is long enough to where it actually spans a few of these extra stages. So I could drag this out if I wanted to. And so now this coincides with my current release setting here. If I bring this back down, Remember, this release is affecting the volume of lane one. All right. Now, if I wanted to, I could bring envelope one decay to zero, release to zero, bring sustain all the way up. So now, in effect, whenever I play a note, it's just going to be at whatever the sustain level is. And then when I release the note, the volume level will drop to zero. And I could have this end up modulating the volume of oscillator 1.
fact, we could turn this all the way down. And what's happening is this sustain, the envelope one is overriding the setting that we have here. So let's set this to gate. So that won't work. What I'm trying to do is get this portion of the multi-stage envelope generator to act as a release would from envelope one normally. And let's see. Let me bring it all the way up here. I think what we would have to do is use the modulation matrix. So we could set the target for envelope one sustain and modulate it with MSEG1. And then set sustain to zero. Well, actually, the release. And then remove the pitch from the equation. So now this envelope, I'm modulating ENV1 release with the multi-stage envelope generator. So now when I release the note, the release stage of the envelope generator, which starts after the loop, is controlling the release value here. Okay, so it's kind of similar to an ADSR envelope. Now we can do a lot more with multi-stage envelope generators. So let me go ahead and demonstrate that. And as I do that, I'll point out what some of these other properties are for. So if we wanted to, we could make some pretty wild sounds, which are kind of reminiscent of some of the things you've probably heard in some electronic dance music, but not necessarily trance. But like we could modulate the tune again, say two octaves. And let me just clear the matrix here so that we know that we're only modulating this tune parameter. So right now if we play this, I'll just make some adjustments here. Special effects type sounds could be used, made with this. Now we could also quicken or speed up the rate of the loop with this control here. So right now the time units are quarters. So that means that each one of these stages it represents one quarter note in length. So this would be one quarter, two quarters, three quarters, four. So by the time we get to this end of the fourth stage, it would be considered four quarter notes in length if we didn't have the loop there. So let me actually set the loop point. Loop start here and loop end in five. You can also set it to 16th. And then notes. Then seconds. All right, so we'll go back to quarters. Now we can also speed up the attack phase of the envelope. So if I set my loop point from, let's say, here, loop start will be at four and loop end will be at five. So this would be considered the part prior to the loop and that's called attack. If I wanted to slow that down, I could drag attack down or speed it up. 
You know, something like that. And then release does the same thing. It speeds up or slows down the part after this loop phase. And then velocity just applies scaling to the amount based on the note velocity. All right, so let's try to create something interesting. You can zoom in and out here by just clicking in the open area and dragging down or up. I'm going to set the loop point for two. So loop start and loop end. So this will be the first part. Okay, and then poly is basically, this would allow each individual note to start the MSEG as it's played. So if I play two different pitches here, I'll play a low C note and a high C note. So you can hear I brought the high C note in after the low note had already entered the loop. Okay, if I say single, then pretty much they both follow wherever it is in the loop stage when the note starts. So let me play the low C note followed by the high C note. So here, as I played the high C note, instead of starting at the beginning of the multi-stage envelope generator, it started where it currently was, which was in the loop phase. If I say mono, then what happened is it restarted when I hit the high C note, and so the low C note also restarted and was affected by that multi-stage envelope generator. Okay, so that's the basic idea. If you right-click, there's a context menu that allows you to quantize and snap to different points in the grid. You can invert the envelope. If we say upside down, then it just flips it. If we double-size, it stretches it out. If we say half-size, then it just cuts it in half. And then each grid space here, each stage, actually has four different points within it. So we can start here on the three, or one over, two over, three over, and then fourth ends up being on the fourth one. And that's really about it as far as the MSEG goes. And you can modulate anything... And here I've just modulated the tune, but well, volume's also modulated here as well. But you'll see how this is used in a more practical sense when we program the acid sequence sound in the next video. I'll see you there.